Welcome, everybody. Uh, today, I have a special guest, Sloop Doop. Um, I don't know if I need to do much of an introduction, but I'll do a quick introduction of from me is you kind of started showing up um, early fab with the guy with the frog hat on, which cracked me up. Um, and I'm assuming that was the point <laughs> of mm-hmm. it. Um, but it was always at first it was just like thumbnails and stuff. I was like, this is hilarious. Let me keep watching this. Um, and it, it did its job. Um, and I've been watching you set. I mean, it's probably been years now. It's, I started in Monarch area, and I think you were, I think you were uh, making videos then. It was. It, I got in between Crucible first and Monarch first, but I got in like it was. It was spring of 2021, and it was after everything had spiked up in price. So I got in having to like spend a ton of money just to get all the playable cards, just to play the game, not even to collect. But um, you know, it was a it was a heck of a time. But yeah, I that's that's. You know, it's crazy to think, but that's over three years ago now. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like the game is still so new, but it's like, those are like ancient times when I would imagine more than 50% of the player base currently wasn't even around at that time, if you really think about it. That was that was actually when I got in as well. So I got in just before Monarch dropped. Um, I don't even know. I can't remember if Crew Unlimited was out yet. I don't think it was. It came after I, Monarch. It did come, okay. Because I remember spending a lot on first edition crew to just get like commons and rares i was like Mm -hmm. can i buy some bulk off of people and like i spent a lot um a little too much probably but you know that those were the days uh where you spent too much and uh just to play but um yeah and so one of the things i did want to just put out there is you told me you're about to become an uncle right yeah, so my uh, younger sister actually, um, I was the first person she told that she was pregnant. This was uh, <laughs> about nine months ago. It was like eight, eight and a half months ago now. So like within the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm probably going to be an uncle for the first time. It's been ever since my two younger sisters were born. They're about six and seven years younger than me because I have two of them a year apart. Mm-hmm. And we haven't had any babies in the family since then. But again, like I was seven years, six, seven years old. Yeah. So it's like, it's been most more, it's been like 22 years. So they've actually beaten me to the punch. But, you know, uh, it's going to be really, really nice having an expansion of the family and something to kind of bring everybody together as well. Because like, you know, when you're, no, there's no other kids involved. Everybody mm-hmm. just kind of does their thing. Me and my, all my siblings in that and, you know, my parents. But now it's, it's kind of nice to have something to bring us all back together. So I'm very yeah. much looking forward to that. I always, so I'm a, you know, I'm a fab dad. So I have three kids. My oldest siblings have it. My younger brother is about to actually have his first, um, actually it's due day after my youngest was birthday, which is fun. Um, but yeah, no kids, kids in families, especially when they're not your own mm-hmm. <laughs> is, is, is always fun. Cause with you, like, I always like, like with, with, uh, with, with my nieces and nephews, it's fun to like just kind of fly in and have fun. And we all, you know, I have my own kids. So and then we all kind of go separate and you get to have, you know, a blast. Um, you know, it's, that's super exciting. I'm excited for your family. Um, it sounds like you all are pretty close, which is uh, great. Not something that you always see. So that's, that's great that you guys seem to have a closeness in there. So I'm just going to give just kind of preliminary kind of, subject matter just to like Mm -hmm. get us kind of centered on this because some of you might be like oh well who's this nathaniel guy here's sloop who's this nathaniel guy so um what happened was i don't know maybe a year ago or so um ethan is off doing you know basically working for lss at this point um (laughs) doing some fantastic things uh that uh he just doesn't have time to keep up with clash um so he's like hey you know, you've been pretty heavily involved. Can you take it over? I was more than glad to take it over. Um, then LSS did something crazy, which was they announced there's going to be 15 heroes in a year, which was really fun to hear. And I went, okay, well, I'm a, a dad and I have all this stuff I have to do. And I love this format. And I think this format can succeed um, without me. And I would love it to succeed without me. And so I went and started a a cl- what I call a clash committee, but essentially a rules committee, right? You know, we have it in mm-hmm. Commander, we have it in Popper, we have a lot of um, MTG stuff, and that was kind of the goal was to just like, hey, I'm going to make a committee that is just like what we have in Magic, it seems to do well, 
I've never heard too many issues about a uh, commander committee over there, the rules committee. And so that was kind of my goal. And so now we have a committee. We have several members. Um, we have different members from, they're all around the world, different backgrounds. Some are like competitive level players, you mm-hmm. know, calling winners. We have other people that are, you know, just like commoner and clash is, is what they do. Uh, we've got people in Europe. We've got people in the U.S. And so like that was a very like, a strategic thing um that we did now i basically had it up but the whole goal was if nathaniel decides i want to get out of clash or not clash just out of fab in general um that this format can go on um because i think it's a fantastic it's i think it's pro it's easily the best fan made format um and i think it's the i think it's the best casual format out there and and i like to play casual personally um so that's just kind of like the kind of the background as to as to what's going on there. And so, you know, one of the art, I think ultimately um, everyone's goals um, in is, is to make clash official. I know Ethan, he just uh, commentated the finals of the clash bash and he was extra excited after watching that, which was exciting to see. And he was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to try to push this to get us to official. I was like, yes, do that. Uh, but kind of one of our goals ultimately though, and, and this is less of like an ego and more of like a, concerning is ultimately one of our goals is while we want it to be official we also want there to always be a committee involved kind of like commander is and the reason being and i say this and try to everyone's like well you're just selfish and want to own it no it's the reason being is we've seen with commoner um how slow they are to make bans or any changes and things like that and so our goal is to essentially try to uh pr- be a little more a little bit more involved obviously it's, this is what we do uh, because ultimately LSS, their job is to balance CC and make the best possible competitive game, which they're killing it. And so that's kind of, I, I want to kind of preface this and just kind of throw that out there is we will want it to be an official format, but we want there to be some sort of um, community members to be a part of that so that, um, th- so that we can be like, just kind of make those decisions instead of um, LSS finally made bands and commoner because they're like, hey, let's meet with community members. And now we have a committee where it's like, we have the people right there, LSS. Like, we're here. <laughs> you can just come chat with us and we'll, we'll, we have ideas on, on, on stuff like that. So that's kind of the whole idea of kind of the, the committee in there. And it's, um, I think it's going well. You know, we're trying to be preemptive and doing mm-hmm. stuff and, and testing things. But, um, so that's just sort of a quick background as to where Clash is and, and why we're, we're chatting here. And, and Sloop, you have been a, a huge proponent, and you drop one video mentioning Clash, and all of a sudden, I can't tell you how many people we've got coming in being like, hey, I'm really interested in Clash. What's up? What's going on with this? Like, just from one thing you said. I see when I made that video, um, it was because <laughs> I we finally at my LGS, we were having trouble getting new players. And we were like, you know what, let's do a format that's super budget, I can build a ton of decks all at once. And so there's a little bit of something for everybody to play. Um, one of the things I really liked about it also was that uh, because of the way that it's commons and rares and basically specializations as well as, you know, you can have majestic weapons and that. But essentially, you could buy a Blitz Precon and you had a functioning Clash deck because it was just commons and rares. And the only thing that was majestic were in the Monarch ones, it was the Mentors. And they were legal in the format and in Clash. So it's like you could pick one of those up and have a Clash-ready deck right there. And honestly, a functioning, like, pretty good clash deck you know you might have some issues if you're picking up the prism one and you know you're throwing a herald and it just gets popped (laughs) by a brute you know you might have some problems there but for the most part um you know it was it's a very easy format to get into Uh, i like it because the issue i have with commoner is that when you only have commons a lot of heroes don't get to express their full selves like dromai doesn't have her dragons prism doesn't have a lot of her auras uh you know there's just so much that rares unlock another thing i heard was that azalea and riptide were basically the same deck in commoner because the card pool is just so small whereas you know you add the rares and all of a sudden you have all these different traps you have all these different cards that they can use and it, it makes decks a little bit more defined while keeping the power level low enough because if you look at blitz i mean you know blitz a lot of the times ends up being like first couple turns like if you get knocked to a really low life total game's basically over you might not be dead within the first two turns but the game's essentially over after that because if you're at five and the opponent's at like 12 you're probably not coming back from that um blitz feels like modern Yu-Gi-Oh, and i might get roasted mm -hmm. 
by Yu-Gi-Oh fans, but that's what it feels like. I don't know if you've ever played if you've played recent modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I, well, I, not, I know old school Yu-Gi-Oh. I played old school Yu-Gi-Oh. I played Yu-Gi-Oh about three up until about three years ago. Basically, I got into Fab and I dropped everything for this game. Like I just <laughs> didn't care about any others. But I did play Yu-Gi-Oh casually. But I'm well aware of like the the issues with Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, that game could have used an action point resource system, you know, to, to help it a little bit. Um, but yeah, so Clash is, uh, the reason I liked Clash is just we started playing it. I found it really fun. It's really fun to brew decks for because you don't really need that many Majestics except for specializations for the most part. And so you got to like, I just, I have a ton of boxes over there because I've opened up a, at least like a case of product for every set. Maybe not all at once, but I'll buy like a box yeah. every couple of weeks and end up, you know, with a case even for my least favorite sets, like let's say Outsiders. But that still gives me enough cards that I can just throw together an Azuri deck and just play it. And, and the thing is, it's nice is when you have the rares, you get to experience the way that the hero plays and functions and kind of get that idea of like what it's doing, but you don't have to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars getting the Codex of Frailties and your, your, you know, um, just all the other assassin cards, like already dead. You just need the shakedowns and then you put in like humbles and maybe cut down to size or some other like com common or rare, you know, two for six. And you get to play this really fun deck that is really low investment in terms of money. Um, they're relatively, you know, straightforward because you are limited on your card choice, but not mm -hmm. so much as commoner. I just thought it was like the perfect all around format. And even if you want to bling out a deck, you can play the Emperor with the two C and Cs and, you know, you can build something a bit more expensive. You can play Shiana with all the specializations. I, I honestly wonder if she's like the most busted hero in Clash because like she's got a good head pieces now. Like if you want to choose all the heavy hitters ones, she's got the Orem Aegis as a, as a shield, like because she can steal Victor's shield. Like it's, she's kind of nuts. And, and um, she's got the flail too. Cause the flail. Yes, yes, the flail. Yes, I actually have a UPF built for her, but maybe I'll have to build her in Clash. Um, <laughs> I so, mean, it, it, it's probably the same thing <laughs> close to it because they're all specializations. Yeah, but I'm, I'm really glad to hear that uh, a lot of people joined in because when I made that video, I expected it to do like, met, like I expected lower views, to be honest, because like it's a format nobody really cares about. It's something small, but I'm like, I'm enjoying it. I just want to make a video on this. Like it was one of those uh, times where I was just like, really interested in a small topic so i just like polished that video off in a couple of days because i was like i just want to get this i didn't you know mm -hmm. put tons of editing or anything into it i just wanted to talk about the format and it did way better than i thought it would a lot of people seemed interested so i was like hey cool like i'm glad hopefully this gets that that train rolling slowly but surely um because it's like in flesh and blood it's really hard to get anything but cc kind of off the ground yeah um a lot of people look at blitz and they go oh, it's a garbage format it's really swingy and like I'm, I'm just gonna put my hands up i sometimes like swingy games i sometimes like and and maybe at a tournament it's not as great but when i get to sit down with my friends and i can polish off like six seven games in a single like couple hours you know two to three mm -hmm. hour session and we're just playing game after game and some end in like five minutes some go for 25 minutes uh, but we just get to have a really fun back and forth, play a bunch of different decks. You know, um, I find that enjoyable. Clash makes that easier because you, it's easier to build decks. You can build tons of different ones with minimal investment, especially monetary wise. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of, I guess, my introduction to Clash, why I like the format, why I think hopefully anybody listening to this tries it out. Like it's a, it's a pretty fun format. I think it's really good for budget. It's really good for getting in new players. Um, but I even think like, there's enough depth at the common and rare level that I do genuinely think that there is uh, a ton of depth to the format as well. And there's a lot of like different hero viability and there's probably a metagame that would shape if it got big enough. If LSS picked it up officially, I think commoner is just dead in the water. I don't see any reason for commoner to exist, but I think for their game, just, I almost think that Clash is just a far superior format to commoner, you know, especially considering it still addresses the price issues. Yeah, so I loved, so like I was heavy into Commoner. I loved Commoner. I was like, oh, this is great. Um, and then I started kind of messing um, with, so I have, I was collecting all of the Blitz decks and um, I was playing with my brother. I introduced my brother to the game. I was playing with him. Um, and I was like, oh, try Briar. Like, she's really good. You'll probably really like her. I don't know if you've ever played the Briar Precon. It is the worst deck that I think I've, it is awful. It's um, a little rough, yeah. Because it's, because it's, I, I get what they were going with it. You know, they're trying to introduce Earth and, and all that, but like Earth is not Briars, um, which I'm really looking forward to the new set. I'm not going to lie, because I, Earth and Lightning were my two favorite things with mm -hmm. it, and nobody really did anything with that. It was all ice. Um, so I was on this like kind of kick of, hey, I, there's got to, I'm going to make some fun kind of entry level decks. 
And that was right when Ethan was like, I'm going to make Clash. And I was like, probably annoying him too much. Immediately was like, hey, when he's like, I want to make this a thing. He said that literally on a stream at uh, Team Covenant. And I was like, I want to be involved in this. <laughs> what can I do um, from the get go? Uh, so it was really, really cool. And I immediately, one of the things I, so I play, I've played a ton of, um, I'm kind of that person who I would rather play CC than Blitz. Traditionally, I have been. Um, I think Blitz has kind of grown on to me because of what you said. It's like, let's just throw our power stuff in there and just blast seven games. We got an hour. Let's play as many as we can. Mm -hmm. Um, But with CC, my problem was, is I love to play too many heroes. I want to play Azalea. I want to go play Bolton. Um, And, you know, this is the Monarch days and Arya days. I want to play uh, Briar and all of that. And so, like, I had, like, little investments into each hero. And, you know, back in that time, like, you know, you're looking at a, a, a few hundred dollars to just for equipment and Briar. Like, if you didn't have it, you had to drop a lot. Um, and so with Clash, that was kind of exactly it, where I was like, I just love playing all these heroes, and now I get to have the fun. And the other thing I like about it is the fact of what you're saying. You can bling out your deck. I can build a $10 Fi deck, or I can go and I can build a $100 Emperor deck, or I could go and build a Dromai deck with all these marbles and spend $1,000. <laughs> not not so much now. The marbles are cheaper, but you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. you have all that at your, at your disposal, because I like shiny things. I don't know. I'm your typical... Dude, I'm, I'm like shiny things. I've been blinging out my Enigma deck, and let me tell you, my wallet is not happy with me whatsoever. <laughs> I need like three more of the Marvel cheese, but like, and I've opened, so, I mean, dude, I've opened up so much product, and I kept pulling like Meridian Pathways are my my spoiler card. So they sent me a cold foil. I pulled three Rainbow foils, and I've pulled the, sa- the Enigma Sacred Art and Homage to Ancestors Marble, and I already had those two. Like I had already bought them from people, and I'd pulled the Homage, and then I pulled them again, and I'm like, why do I keep just getting the same ones? No levels i've opened up like three cases of product not a single <laughs> levels of enlightenment so of that's been great i had to buy those too but shout out to hamil patel for giving me a letting me buy them just before the price spiked after american nat so it's very glad oh my I gosh them yeah I did. yeah uh, but see, this is what we're kind of talking with clash though where like you don't have to worry about any of this because like it's mostly just commons and rares um however that brings me to one little point of like there is one thing that will kill clash 100 percent and make it completely pointless to play is if lss made an official format that was commoner but just added rares forget yeah. the specializations majestic weapons all that stuff you know changing things like the the figments to be specializations for the new prism um if they just add rares to the format that's like 95 percent of the reason to play clash the extra stuff is like is like icing on the cake but the real substance is just commons and rares rares. you actually have like the full scope of what a hero is trying to do um and i i would even be fine with lss doing that i think most people would be like clash was fun it was great but we have a format that's almost the exact same it gives us what we need you know i think people would move to that so there's like an idea for lss because i think it'd be really cool to have a blitz style format where it's just commons and rares so you got a little little more expansion a little bit more power um which then unlocks things which i'm noticing here you've got a little thing about um, my feedback of Rosetta Thorn and yes. um, I know this I being that. very strong and apparently slightly controversial. Um, because because one of the things about Clash is that because you only have comps and rares and specs, the power isn't as high. You know, you're not getting hit with a swarming gloom veil and a rebel in rune blood, but you can still go because you have rares, Mobber Sky, Shrill for seven, Rosetta for you know four, um, and anything in between if you have it. So I guess we can kind of if you want to move to that point, because I'm very yeah. curious, what, what have people been saying about the Rosetta change? I guess we can say what it is. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, and so this was just before the committee started. Um, I actually started going back to like your video on clash. I actually was already thinking that that hit, there was so much interest. And I was like, we're going to make a committee literally off of the back of your video. I think if you hadn't made your video, I don't know if that would have happened. So you're, you're one link in the chain, um, in all of this. So just so you know, it's always fun yeah. seeing those little things <laughs> that happen just because of one thing that you do. Um, yeah, so that was, you were talking uh, about Rosetta, um, and I've always felt, and, and this is just partial, you know, my partiality, is that I always felt that that weapon should never have been Runeblade only. This playing with a Runeblade, I don't, so like, I'm like very much into like the visuals of the game and all of that. And when they don't match up, Sometimes it like really upsets me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, um, but like it's like that you. like RPG like 
I've played a lot of RPGs and like like I I'm a I used to play a ton of Destiny and when my character didn't like get the look I wanted, like I would literally not play the best armor because I wanted a particular look. And I'm like the same way with card games, especially with hero centric ones. Um, and so it always bothered me. And then you were talking about that. And I was like, you know what? Like Rosetta Thorn has been a problem in CC. Like on the power level of CC, Rosetta Thorn is an issue. Let's just, let's just take care of this now. And we made Rosetta Thorn Briar only specialization. Um, with the new heroes dropping, we might relook at that. We're just trying to see what the new heroes are and see if it needs to be an elemental or or that. But, we're, but we're, for now, we're just leaving it as is. Um, but we've gotten a lot of kickback from people that love chain. There's been a lot of chain people. They're like, I don't even want to touch this format because chain's my favorite and I want to play Rosetta. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I, I mean, Chain's a really <laughs> strong hero. You can still run, like, otherwise. Like, Reaping Blade. The reason I thought Rosetta should go to just Briar um, is just because, like, it's just, especially for a fast format, it's just so much damage. Like, uh, I'll do a little, like, I'm going to Canadian Nationals uh, in, a, like, not even two, like, a week and a half from now. Um, and my friend and I are going to sign up for the one Blitz event, and I'm planning on playing Briar just because yeah. I'm like, well, I, I can just go wide. I can, I heck, maybe I even play the Royal Build just to, to high mm -hmm. roll and play channel mount heroic and and throw rosetta at the end of a chain because it's it's an overpowered weapon and i found for the clash format specifically it feels like like the power level is supposed to be down but when i can go mauve shrill for seven into rosetta with just three cards and and present that much split damage and that much issue for the opponent mm -hmm. and and the thing is is like yes you you only got like the six mob and i put in like the two blue lead the charges um i think i might have had captain's calls in there maybe i, can't I think remember. you did you sent me um, a while ago that i had as well as uh, hope merchant's hood because the hope merchants mm -hmm. on a turn you didn't get go again you just like you're only trying to get like three, four turns of putting enough pressure on the opponent before they're just having to block constantly. And then you just have the time to pick at them little by little. Uh, and I found Rosetta, like, especially turn one, when you can leak like two, three, four damage turn one, just because uh, here's the Rosetta. Okay, I'll take the Arcane, I guess. And then I'll, I'll block the two. Um, that's even just leaking two. That can, that can like really make or break a game. Um, because like, if you just get that initial damage, then the next time you do it, they have to give up a hand or, or take some of the damage. And within a few turns, I found that I was just able to, like, I swept everybody in that, mm -hmm. that tournament. We just did a normal armory. And so that's why I was like, maybe for this format, maybe Reaping Blade, like the power level of ending with just three instead of four split. Um, maybe that's enough. And to make Mr. Mm. still good, but not so overpowered that it's just like every turn I'm just doing that same line of just like go again enabler, attack, Rosetta, go and I'm just able to block with the card yep. freely. And if I keep it, then my hands are even wor like more deadly. Um so it's just yeah, it was just in my mind, it was it was just a bit too much. And I almost feel like chains the same way. Like yes. I can understand. Listen, one other thing that I would say, if you're playing it like an armory or something. You guys can change the rules if you want. It's a fan made format. Yes. I'm sure, like, it's not even official. You you can't even officially yes. <laughs> log it in on Alyssa's thing. If you wanted to say, hey guys, do you care if I play Rosetta and Chain? Nobody cares. Nobody just, cares. I would just say, just do it. Um, I my thing was from Viscerai's perspective. Maybe Chain's okay. Chances are probably not. Um, you know, Chain's is probably not okay in general. Uh, well, maybe for a faster he's, format. He's, you know, with the faster here, format, but... um, he's actually not. He's he's not as like. He's not as dangerous as, as you think he is. Um, but like, for instance, so my skirmish, I I can't, I don't know if I'm going to stream or, or judge or play my skirmish season, um, but our skirmish is going to be LL. Um, and if I play, I'm going to play a Briar and I'm going to play Rosetta and my Briar. And if I'm sitting here going in my, in my, you know, we're, we're doing, you know, in my LL, skirmish i'm gonna run rosetta thorn and a briar that will probably do a lot of work because uh i be have ball briar. of lightning at my ability at my fingertips yeah, um, you could put belittles in there too and just yes. do this really nasty because like ball lightning right that's another belittle target you can get that extra mm -hmm. resources grab that uh, that non-attack action to trigger everything or yes. just plus three on something you can make a very nasty deck um, you can make a very out. nasty and and warmongers deck. is at one so same a channel yes. like frigid so you're not going to get shut down nearly as often no and and i have and like i used to have a, a budget version of basically a cheerios briar and it did, i didn't even need um channel mount heroic and i would just destroy people with my budget briar 
Uh, granted, Starvo was usually a trick here, but um, or was that? I'm trying to remember, I think I think Briar got hit before Starvo, but um, but she's also a Rada, you know, so it does make a difference. But um, you know, that was just kind of my thought too. My whole thing is I um, when I'm looking at that, kind of what I said, like I love like the I want the visual and all of that, and so like Chain holding a Rosetta Thorn just felt very awkward to me. Um, mm -hmm. Stay with this, and and I know that's silly, but everybody's gonna say that, and they'll be like, "Well, you can do other stuff." But the other problem I usually have with with this stuff, and this is something that I'm constantly looking at, uh, especially being charged with the format now, is um, if there's just the best in slot weapon that we're going, that you're always gonna run, doesn't matter what they do, then there's a problem, right? Like ninjas kind of have this, but now with the new Kakara, I think you have this less. The new Kakara, if I'm going to go Tiger build, like I'm looking at the Kakara now. And so I actually think now is, is that a better spot? Because, I mean, there's no way we're going to touch any of the ninja weapons. But um, yeah, that was always a, a that's always a concern of mine where I'm like looking at that, like what's the best in slot? Is there any reason to not run anything else? Um, and with ninjas, it wasn't quite. But with like Rosetta Thorn, it's like, why do I run anything else? Mm -hmm. I'm not touching any other weapon um, no matter what. And so that was that was always a little concerning um to me and so that was kind of one of the reasons why i moved on to quickly now and now if a change like that came through i can't just be like well i don't like it lore wise and visually it's bad and whatever like i actually have to go through uh it all has to go through a committee so um kind of in the notes here as i put and i didn't really say this too much is so we have six members um before set drops if anybody has a problem with something uh, we put it up to a vote. Like if we say, hey, we think this might be too strong or this might be too strong. We actually put it up for a vote and two thirds have to pat, have to vote. So four, four people have to say, yes, we agree with that. And if it doesn't get that, then it doesn't go through. Um, we're also we're going to start doing some more testing. So every set we do a clash bash and we're going to start doing kind of a rules change set every clash bash of like, hey, we're testing out this. So with the new one, uh, we're looking at just like ball of lightning. We might unban ball of lightning and a couple other things just for the clash bash to see what it is. Look at data, get people's votes. I'm sure everyone's going to say, no, we don't want to see that. Um, this is just a thought. We don't know if we're going to do this mm -hmm. or not. Um, just I. I want to see the new cards first before are like, hey, let's unban Ball of Lightning. Because um, it might just be like, hey, there's enough Lightning cards. Who cares? Like, let's just leave that. That's going away. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just kind of, we're, we're going to start trying to do just kind of some tests like that of what do we see? What is there? Like, do we have, because our bands haven't, our bands follow common bands as well as we have a couple in there that Ethan had in from the start. Um, and so we're we're just kind of, you know, we want to make sure like we're being proactive and it's not just like, hey, this is too powerful commoner, right? Because maybe it's not too powerful for, for us. Uh, so far, what we have banned, what commoner has banned, um, has made a difference in the format in a good way. Like Stubby Hammer is going, we were already, we were literally already looking at that and we're about to vote on that when it got banned. It's like, perfect. We don't have to think about this. Yeah, that, Same with the advice. Dude, that card is busted. It's actually crazy how, um, how many cards in this game like people will look at legendaries and be like those are the be all end all like the most powerful cards like oh i can't play the game without them but it's like there are so many like mm -hmm. just cheap cards that are stubby hammers is broken uh blood she's kalita was broken yeah. still is like um you know even you could even argue snapdragon scalers is still one of the most powerful feet in the games and it's a common heart and cross strap is like a super underrated card you know just like an e-pot on a stick like just any time all there's there's so many of these cards that are just like they're a one-time use so people don't think they're amazing but it's like sometimes that one-time use is all you need to swing a game stubby right. hammers in a format where you've only got 20 life especially if it's now a zen trying to play tigers and they're just like we're gonna pop stubby hammers here's uh here's like a 27 damage turn uh you have 20 life i guess i just yes yeah. yeah yes yeah no so those are already things that we're looking at stubby hammer is actually honestly didn't get banned earlier because i had been um you know like there's been some stuff in there where uh like i said i've been in clash from the beginning and so there's been a couple times where i've been like hey ethan we should maybe look at this or you know like so like a lot of the stuff of like um CNC and emperors and same with the um angels um a new prism like those were things i was like well first he actually added cnc and i was like well if we're gonna do that like we should probably do it for new prism he's like oh yeah you're right let's let's do that let's let's get those angels in there um 
which I think was fine because I was like, well, you know, basically if it references a card, it, it goes in. Um, but yeah, the other piece I really love about it is I love, um, you know, we talked about blinging out decks. Um, and so now I primarily play Clash. So I don't really have, like, I don't have, I don't have time to play CCR. I mean, it's on Saturday. Usually Saturdays I'm either doing family day or I'll work in the evening, um, things like that. And so, like, I just don't have a Saturday to give to it. So I don't pay attention to CC. And Clash has given me um, a reason to pay attention to spoiler season. It's like, oh, is there new specializations coming out? Is there what are common and rares coming out? Things like that. And so it makes, it helps. For those of us that don't have time for CC and, and all of that, it actually, it helps. It lets me engage in the way that I've always, that I love to engage with the game in general. Because when I was playing CC all the time, like I loved spoiler season like it's so much fun to just see these mm-hmm. cool little cards and like you start like going to like hey what are some cool decks we can build and like you actually care about it um and so like when you it feels like i can still even though i only play casual format i can still interact with the card game like spoiler season and things like that in a way that i just wouldn't have in say like commoner if i was only playing commoner or something um, and so that's why I've always liked it. Cause, uh, and you were talking about, Hey, commons, only commons and rares. Initially, that's all I wanted after playing clash. I'm like, ah, I hope they just don't make it commons or rare. Like the, the specializations are so cool. Cause otherwise mm-hmm. you'll have like very similar decks across, a, across it. Um, you know, if they, if they did do clash official and we're like, well, we don't care about your committee. I would I, ultimately at the end of the day, I don't care. I think that I would love for them to just because then we have these people that they can go to and say, Hey, you know, what are some issues that you're seeing? Here's some data that we have that we're seeing. Um, and then we, you know, have a, have kind of a, um, you know, point of contact ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, you just want a point of contact with the company like commoner does. Right. Um, they don't have like a real, committee i know that's been some commoner people have said hey it would be nice to have some stuff like that like what you know like a popper committee like mtg has um and so that's kind of what we're what we're trying to go for but um let me ask you this so you said your favorite hero was enigma um is that the only one that you've played in in cc so far like what is what are some i guess what i'm trying to get at is um now that you've played a bit of clash and you've played you're heavy into cc and I, i love the fact that you are um how different do a lot of these decks feel if you've played similar decks between CC and, and Clash? Do they feel like they are substantially different? Do they feel like they kind of hold some of that fun power level? That's kind of what I'm trying to get towards because I'm sure you probably haven't messed with Clash, uh, Enigma Clash yet. And I've been trying to figure out in Clash and she's hard because all of the best Enigma cards are majestic and I can't play them. It's a little difficult without that mirror guy, um, specifically <laughs> in Restless. So uh, I actually, I just want to quickly jump back to a point before, and I wrote both these down, um, just so I'll get to the different decks in a moment. But you had mentioned that you like the specializations in Clash. And don't get me wrong, I think that the little spice is really good for the format. But I think the issue that LSS would have if they wanted to adopt it is having to like reclassify certain things as specializations, mm-hmm. you know, and then like mess around with like, oh, there's also majestic weapons, but we don't really make that many of those anymore. <laughs> just, so I I think maybe if they just made it commons and rares, it'd be it'd just be a more simplified way rather than having to be like, oh, C and C. Because when it's a fan made format, you could do it. Yeah, because people I who do are it finding it are a little more into the game, so they're willing to like figure out rules and that and like read extra stuff. Whereas like if LSS picks it up officially, commoner is like when it's just all commons, but you can use rare equipment. It's very basic, everybody understands, it's very simple to make your deck. So I, I could see them doing clash as well. But that's I just wanted to make that point as to why. Like I think specs are amazing. I actually love that part of it. Um, but I can see why they might, if they were to adopt it, why they would just do commons and rares because it might just be easier to manage and for people to understand. As for different decks, so I've only played the Enigma Blitz deck, um, like the pre-con, like once or twice just to try it out. Um, I think that's kind of the way she's going to have to be built where it's like you have a, some auras, but a lot of it's just here's some attacks with Transcend to get their full power and, you know, doing some crazy stuff. Um, loving her in CC though. I haven't built her in Clash. I might at some point. Uh, the two decks that I would like to reference, though, are, um, well, because, like, it really it really depends. I guess there's a few I want to talk about. For instance, um, young like, Clash Prism, uh, Advent of Thrones, and the Awakener of Soul, like, the adult version, the two new Prisms. Um, the Clash version is 
way stronger when they don't have poppers and impossible to even play when they do have a lot of poppers you go up against guardians because like you're having all these heralds but your best options are like passing barrage and parable of humility which like you have it's 20 life format you actually only have yeah. 16 life two hits from a brood or a guardian and you're dead you know one turn from them sometimes and you're dead so it's like you've got a like you're you're just throwing heralds at nothing it's very difficult to play you don't really have much of a sideboard can't do like the iris package whereas in like and you also don't have uh phantasmal footsteps which is like the key card against anything with poppers so that deck is like as much as i love her uh when it's again if i'm going up against like a ninja i'm just laughing all the way to the bank it's like cool (laughs) those are some nice go wide cards here's a herald for seven herald for seven i'm gonna go get an angel flip it like you know and and get some free stuff out of it um so it's it's fine but um, that's one of those decks that's like very different between the two formats just because you're lacking those key couple yes. cards. Yes. You do and have then... to play that matchup very differently. I've done, I actually played a really amazing one where I went in with, I don't remember what it was, but it was a sixer and mm-hmm. they destroyed me because they like put me in weird instances where I would pop all their stuff and then they'd flash in like one of their light thing, one of their light ones where like, hey, I get pinged when I yeah. destroy. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. And so, like, they put me in weird, awkward uh, positions. But, like, it's still hard. Like, you have to be, like, a really amazing prison player to pull mm-hmm. that off. Like, Yeah, it's just you You have to play very different. You have yeah. to jump through some hoops. You got to, like, yeah. And sometimes, like, again, you only have 16 life. Sometimes you just get, like, you draw, like, a figment and, like, and so, like an ALS <laughs> and or something like... you can't block with, like an, uh, like an aura in your first hand. And they're like, here's, like, I don't know, 14 damage turn one. You're like, cool, I'll block six and take eight. I'm half my yeah. life total. I have eight left. I'm basically dead by that point, right? You yeah. can win. You can pull it out. But like, yeah, there, she's balanced in that way. But then you have like other decks. I found Viscerai um, to be the exact same as Royal Viscerai, the way I built it, because you can mm-hmm. run all the mobs. You can run the lead, the charges. Um, Hope Merchant said to get the redundancy. Yeah, you were missing out on like Swarm and Groove Bell and Rebel and Rune Blood, but it's like you can still run all these other like one for four go again attacks like meet and greet you could just run different options to those cards and still do like 90 percent of that deck was just go again shrill or you know spellblade assault like a zero for or two for yeah. whatever you know and then rosetta and you could just do that and now you could do it with reaping blade so it's way more balanced probably not nearly as good but i think that's okay because i think a deck that's just consistently every turn here's a bunch of split damage you can't deal yep. with um very oppressive hero uh, if he was allowed to run rampant with Rosetta, because that that weapon is just so busted. Yeah. Um, but the deck played basically the same, and I think another good example is like Ko or even Reinar, like Brutes and Guardians as well. Uh, actually, Bravo. Never mind. Bravo is it's not the it's is kind of close but guardians like not having things like spinal crush really hurts them but at least you get more options i was about to say it was bravo but like i remember that i built him in commoner and he was literal trash garbage yes. in that format like just unplayable you have no good dominate effects um or like mostly no good you had a couple for like each matchup but that's it um Com- is- clash at least you get like crippling crush but it's still like you're still yeah. lacking some of his best stuff you still get his uh new spec um what is that Star- Starshock, which is yeah. a crazy, like Very good you card, see yeah. that and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, he's a bit. See, but this is another example of like Bravo and Commoner is unplayable, like just complete garbage. Versus in um in Clash, like having access to those specializations and some majestics really ups the uh, the playability. Dorinthia is insane because she's got like five specializations that she can run. Um, but like, yeah, good. it's it really basically. I think it boils down to if the deck has a lot of redundancy. So like uh, Warriors is another good example of like, you just play a bunch of Blade Runners, hit and runs. Even if yep. you don't have your Majestics like Blade Flare, you have all these other attack reactions. You can fill the slots with common and rare versions of the fully tuned like Majestic yes. builds. And when you can do that, you just have opposite versions. It, it, the Clash deck basically plays the same as the CC deck or the Blitz deck or however, you, you know. And, and let's face it, a lot of us, you know, play budget decks in CC. Most of those <laughs> cards were in my budget Dorinthia. I was like, when I yeah. when I went to go make my Clash uh, Dory, I went in and I was like, okay, can't play this, can't play this, can't play this. But there was like a lot of versions that I had in there that was like, oh, this is my, you know. Mm-hmm. We talked about, hey, when we got into the game, it was expensive. And so there was constantly, you know, you you grew your channel based off of let's make a budget deck of this hero. And I, I know I watched them. I know a lot of people watched them. And there was a lot of stuff in there. You know, to this day, I still don't own CNC. I've always really? run budget stuff. 
Um, I yeah. need to get one for my emperor, but like, yeah, whatever. Well, I, I mean, listen, man, the thing I love about what Flesh and Blood is doing as a whole, and I think they just need to really just, as the game expands, just do more of, is here is a common or rare version of a card yes. that exists that's a little bit worse. Like, even cut down to size. Because if you think about what does CNC do, it's like it presents a card that your opponent goes, shit, I, like, I, I want to keep this five-card hand, so it gets aggressive decks. Azalea, obviously, it's even better, so this is yeah. where other cards don't work. But, like, you know, let's say you're facing a Zen. Sending a Humble at them can be just as disruptive as a CNC yes. because they could be looking at the Humble going, like, I need to activate Zen's ability for this turn. I need his hero, and you're presenting me with a card that I now have to block. Otherwise, I just don't get to do my big turn. Um, CNC is just as devastating where it's like, I need my arsenal. Now you're disrupting it. Obviously, CNC being a three block and, you know, no D-reacts can yeah. be responded to. It makes it even more powerful. Um, and it blows up both arsenals if they're running New yep. Horizons. Like, it's, it's definitely the top tier, but it's like, if you don't have it, you can run humble. You can run maybe a race face in the right meta if you have those. You know they're cheap right now, but like humble is a pretty good option. Cut down the size if they're just trying to keep a five card hand, mm -hmm. and you present them with it. It's like okay, now I have to give up a card that yeah. just neutered a good chunk of my turn against a hero like Zen. That's not the worst. So I love and the same with legendary equipment. I mean, beaten trackers yes. in Brew are I, like the the honestly when I played the KO deck with beaten trackers, like the cease the armory deck, like as yeah. is. I was like, this this foot is amazing. It's a Snapdragon. It's a block one, and then it's a Snappies whenever I need it to be. Um, and then I I upgraded it with just stuff that I had. So like mostly Bloodrest Bellow, and I think I just put all nine Agile Windups because I just wanted a ton of go yep. again, as well as uh, the, the Scab Skin Leathers because I have a full play set of Welcome to Right, so I at least had that early stuff. I sold all my other Brute stuff when it spiked up in price because like, I'm not oh, yeah, playing Brute. Like, I'm gonna, go. Dude, I had a couple. I had two Scalic flesh bags, two beasts within one foil, and then uh, I had a couple of bags and one was foil. So I, I did was like, the same oh. thing. I did yeah, the I was like, thing. I, I pulled these I over the years. I ain't playing brute. Yeah, but like I'll play it in a format like Clash. Um, but I played the Army deck and like beaten trackers. Every time I played Scab Skins and had to roll them, I was like, I wish this was just beaten trackers yeah. because half the time I just need that one turn with the guaranteed go again to keep the pressure up. And you get to run that card in Clash. If you're playing Warrior, Gallantry Gold, Refraction Bolters, I don't know, Blossom of Spring even, and then uh, uh, even Iron Rot Helm. Just run the Iron Rot Helm. Who cares? It blocks one. You know, um, if you're playing uh, Olympia, you've got his, his you know, head. I actually, so I actually, so I play a lot of Warriors in general. Mm -hmm. And Olympia is probably my favorite. I play Hatchets Olympia simply because of his helmet. I get more black out of it. Mm -hmm. And like the difference to me between dory and everybody else like i'll play heavy dory and all that but i also love hatchets was just the fact of i get two extra block than all the other warriors and in a clash format where there's low health and most people like that's three health if mm -hmm. i it's two health if i you know use use it because its ability is phenomenal um but three health like like that a lot of times i'll close our games just on the fact of i have more health than you Man, I mean, I've said it before. If you look at uh, Ko's Helm Knucklehead, ignore the ability because yeah, it's no. just there for fun, right? You're almost yeah. never, unless you're just goofing around, which I've done it before. Um, I once lost to my buddy. He he was playing my Ko deck that I just slightly upgraded. He rolled a six on Knuckle Helm <laughs> and then took his turn. And all like, because like I had already blocked out, and he just had a big turn, so I like blocked with most of my cards. I think I had like yeah. two cards. I was just sending a simple attack. I think it was. I don't even remember. It was just something basic back. And then he takes his turn with five cards rolls the scabbies rolls a six and then plays two he plays sorry just one blood rush bellow but then goes savage beat down into savage beat down so 14 i think he went claw in between so it's like 14 claw yeah. 14 and i was like dude what is this because he had seven cards from the knuckle helm because he arsenaled so it was just like but it was you know it's crazy but most of the games you roll knucklehead and you roll like a two or a three and you're like oh oh i just i just i peed myself never mind that, that was yeah bad. i was um, actually playing a friend who who wanted to use it Mm -hmm. so bad and he's like i'm gonna use the knock out this game it's like okay, cool um and it actually came down to uh when it was when he went to go do it it actually came down to we were so low and he was like he had to get a five or a six or he wasn't gonna win the game no matter what and so like it literally came down to if you roll this knucklehead you probably win and if you don't you don't like and so like while while we talk shit about knucklehead there are actually instances where like it's a win or lose when you roll it mm -hmm. as much as oh, you want to, yeah. as much as you want to, you know, just roll it. Cause I know for me, I just roll it for shits and grins. Oh, but. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>
No, but they, even if you just look at it, if you ignore the ability, it is a literal better Arcanite Skullcap. It's just better yes. than Arcanite Skullcap because yeah. it blocks three with no restriction. Now, mind you, Skullcap seems like it's coming back because they, they're reprinting it in the Japanese Rosetta yeah. as well as Shock Charmer. So I'm imagining that if these new wizards, especially the one that gains life, if they're going to be higher life than you, then Arcanite Skullcap is suddenly a very good card. AB3 and only one slot in your sideboard? Mm -hmm. I, I'm good. I Sign me up for that, honestly. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, especially but, against these, all these, because they're probably going to be twenty health. Is or close to it is going to be my guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's fun. Um, no, it's it's always good. I uh, so I'm going to take a second. I'm going to take a side slot from from um, Clash real quick because you did talk about playing the KO deck. I knew you're high on that. I was actually very low on that, and then I went to a CC armory completely back because I was just visiting a friend mm -hmm. who owns a shop, and they're like, "Hey, we're doing arm, we're doing our armory now." I was like, "Sure." I don't have a deck. And so somebody there was like, hey, take KO. And I was like, all right, let me just throw three Blood Rush Bellows in it. And I went 2-1 in the armory after not playing CC for years. And my only complaint about that deck is actually I want more Agile windups in it. That is my only complaint about it. I That's I, why I just threw Rainbow in. Yeah, I was like, I just need the Rainbow Agile windups. I don't even know if I need the Blood Rush Bellows. This deck is actually really good. And I was, when I saw it, like, I was like, this is total shit. This is awful. I was like, but I need to play it and before I, like, say that. And I played it, and I was like, I just need a Rainbow Agile Windup, and that's mm -hmm. it. That's all you need in that deck. It's actually yeah. really good. And I My lost to Dory, which is not necessarily a great matchup. Yeah, I mean, and and again, you're facing fully tuned decks. The fact that you went two one against a lot of more tuned lists that have like more complete that they built themselves, like yeah, that's. I, was... I played it and I did well with it. Like I lost to, um, I lost to a Riptide, but like Riptide turns out is an awful matchup for KO anyways, and I'm yes. playing like. So the, my one buddy, Joe, like he is part of the, like a lot of these Riptide lists, I guess, that were winning some of the ones a little while ago, I think like ProQuest or whatever that were starting to win. Um, he was like one of the guys behind like the core <laughs> of the list that everybody was running. So like, he's a really good, he's enamored with the hero. So it's like, I'm just sitting down to play this casual KO deck. Of course, I'm going to lose to like my bad matchup yep. on a guy who was like really into it. Of course, that's whatever. But it performed, like everybody was shitting on the deck. And it was like, the thing I had. Is, I like, was my, shitting on the deck. I'll be honest, I was yeah. shitting on it. I mean, yeah, my my thing, my my big criticism was the allocation of like stores can only order twelve, and not every store can get them because I'm like, this is a basic rudimentary product. It is the most basic TCG product outside of a booster box. I don't think stores should be told. And, they and you had any, think, someone sent you special, right? Yeah, LSS sent me one because I said I wasn't able to get one from my two stores, so I was like, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get my hands on this to review. And they sent me one to review, and then I gave it a C plus. So I was like, I was a little nervous putting that out because I'm like, I don't want to just shit on this. I don't like the deck itself is like an A plus. The deck itself was really, I'm uh, sorry, I'd say. It's like a B plus because it really could use something of a sideboard, just a small like maybe yes. here with here's three reckless swings and uh, some null rune and explain the reckless swings come in against like you know maybe Azalea or something. So you have D reacts to teach them. Hey, D reacts, do this thing. I think, or, and, but or, that would even include... just uh, like a sideboard of Blood Rush Bella. Like we're not putting this yeah. in because we don't want to. We want you to have all hits. But if you as a player want to take more risk, here's a here's a fun because I think that there's you know what you. I, I think I saw some of that video too. Um, a sideboard for a CC deck. I when I build a CC deck, I don't even put in sideboard because sideboards stress me out. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to get people into the game, give them a couple pieces of sideboard so that they learn how to like get into. Because like most games I've yeah. played before, I don't play. I've never, I've never played like I play Magic, but not like heavy like competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't do in Commander. We don't do sideboards really. Like here's your hundred card deck, and so like. Um, even to this day, like sideboards are a little bit intimidating to me. Um, yeah, and that's I, a good I, way to onboard them into sideboard. Well, and not only that, but like this is a classic constructed onboarding product. This isn't a blitz onboarding product or a class. This isn't a casual format to get into. Like classic constructed is the competitive format. People are playing the win. They are playing the best decks. You know, the, it is lacking a bit of that experimental, like we're playing something fun and wacky. Yeah. I think Blitz and Clash have that in spades because it's a much yes. more, again, it's it's like if you lose the game, who cares? It was four turns and you died quickly. Turns. Now we can just run it back and try again. You know, um, whereas in Classic Constructed, you can grind for like 45 minutes just to find out my deck is absolute garbage and I can't yes. win with it. Um, so 
But you know, if it's in the uh, yeah, the competitive format, I do think, and at the very least, it should have had like art, like Nolrun gloves and Skullhorn for Arcane Barrier. Because again, you go up against a Viserai or a Kano specifically, you're just dead. Like, how do you yeah. beat a Kano comboing off on you with no AB at all? Like, no way to stop it. Um, I Kano's guess you can just there. press on him. But it just is, yeah, something small like that. I think a folder include of like, here's the basics of how to play the deck. Just show like. Go again, attack at pitching a blue, uh, pitch another blue for claw, another two for six. Like, just show that line, show how to, you know, uh, uh, um, just a quick, like, here's how maybe a type of hand that could play Savage Beatdown, um, you know, like by discarding the Mighty or Agile wind up, and then you can send it, discard the other card, or you can do it on a four card, you know, a four yep. card hand arsenal, five card hand, basically. Um, and so, you know, there were small things, I think, you know, for the price, a 60 card deck flat, which is for like, you know, 40 bucks American was a little much could have included like acrylic, you know, a resource counter and some armor counters or something, just something. Small. I, know, I know you've been pushing that. And I, so I play, I mean, I, before we started recording, we we're talking about my kids. I had to put them to bed mm-hmm. before we jumped on here. So I play competitive Pokemon with my seven year old son. Like we play competitive Pokemon, which mm-hmm. is actually, there's a little more depth to it than you would think. Um, once you like get into it, uh, usually every set I'll grab a you know fat pack basically you know their their fat pack um, a product LSS should just a product LSS game. and every time you say that I was like yeah because for me like I don't buy a booster box of Pokemon I buy singles it's that like, perfect middle ground between pre con deck booster yeah. like bundle like fat pack eight eight to ten packs and then booster box is that middle product for that average player yeah. who wants to get a sealed product open up some packs have a little box and goodies but doesn't want to spend 120 and, and like the sleeves and the sleeves are terrible but we put all of our pokemon decks in them because they're just fun. Have an extra pack for flesh just, and blood don't worry about the sleeves oh yeah for me like for me i actually really enjoy the sleeves because it's more of like i just sleeve up whatever we're whatever we're building and if it breaks, I'll put some real sleeves on. But, like, you know, it's just fun seeing the Pokemon. Like, it's just free, hey, free sleeves. I'll sleeve up a deck. Um, I think I've done some. Whereas, like, in, 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 I build, you know, I have a Clash box kind of like you. You have a ton of decks. I have a Clash box. And I have spent so much money on just getting sleeves to sleeve up 30 decks. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't tell you how many hundreds of dollars I've spent over the course of my TCG lifetime. I've I know. Been playing since I was 11 years old. I've been yeah. playing long, card games longer than I've been all, like than half my life. So. I just so I just sold off all of my magic. I've finished. I finally finished. I was like, I think I'm done. Um, so I just unsleeved. I don't know, like 500 cards at least of decks that have been sleeved up for a good 10 years. So now I have like a pile of sleeves. I'm like, I'm gonna use these. I swear, even though they're they're still holding. They might be smudgy sleeves, but they still hold up. They they're work, going on just, something. I use those ones either to sleeve like singles that I'm putting in a binder or to sleeve up a random whatever deck I'm just tossing <laughs> together to try out, you know, some crap or like something I'm building for somebody else. I'm like, hey, you get my old sleeves. You don't get my yeah. brand new ones. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, you, you get it in there. Um, anyways, I, I know you, you need to go, uh, but I did want to just kind of uh, wrap up in, in Clash <laughs> more talking. We, I, I don't care. I love just chatting card games. Yeah, this, was, this has been a really good conversation. Um, um, oh. No, go ahead. I, I don't even know what I was going to say. I was just kind of trying to fill the space. I guess I'm still in the, the mindset. Like, I haven't done the chat cast in a while. I put that, you know, I, I think I've sunsetted that yes. fully. Um, but, like, sometimes I still have that sense when I'm chatting with somebody online of, like, got to keep the conversation flowing. No dead air. Like, got to say something immediately. Um, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. But, so... One of the things that, that always interested me, because I know you said you've been heavy into CC now, you don't really play Clash, um, but it was really interesting. Um, and you talked about like, hey, we, we use that as kind of an intro to get new players in. And so I just wanted to kind of use that as a way to kind of just lead into the end of, um, you know, I know there's a lot of, I come from a community that struggled um, pretty heavily. And now uh, we now I drive an hour away instead of 20 minutes away to play FAP. Um, just there's a lot of those communities and so i know you guys it sounds like you guys really kind of utilize clash in order to i I don't want to say bolster your numbers but to just kind of make a new entry 
Yeah, we tried. Um, we like it's weird. Like we'd get some new people show up. They would play a day or two. Um, myself and another buddy, like we would like I would just literally straight up buy. Be like, oh, you know, here's some of the tales of Aria decks. We're playing Clash tonight, or we're playing it next week, or whatever. Um, I was like, pick one of these tales decks, and like I would just buy them for them, right? Or like mm -hmm. I'd hand them stacks of cards, or we'd really yep. like try and be like, hey, I'll what here are you interested in? I'll build you a deck so if you show up next week. But a lot of people just didn't show up again, uh, or they'd show up a couple times and then they just stop. Uh, one of the things about our LGS is like store owner doesn't really keep products too much in stock yeah. and he's very much into another game. And like the two and the one guy that kind of work, works there, quote unquote, he's really into Yu-Gi-Oh! So that game's doing fine. And the, the owner's really into Grand Archive. So that game's doing fine because the two people there all the time are like really pushing and promoting those yep. games, whereas they're not really into flesh and blood. And I think it's because... Um, like, well, quite just to be quite honest, I mean, they'll never see this. Um, they're not that great at card games, which is like fine. You're not, you don't have to be really good, right? You can just be casual, fun. Yeah. But they really struggled in Flesh and Blood because, like, you kind of have to like be a slightly higher caliber of thinker when you're playing Flesh and Blood. Like, it's just like the 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 barrier to actually winning uh, in with your decks is, I think, higher than other card games because, like, yeah. you need to know how to navigate like the early, mid, late game, especially the late game when you're at low life total. You need to know. Like these are guys that would just like take damage until they were at one and then just like just for no reason. And then they would just like have to block with their whole hand after that. It's like, well, if you would have used your life tactically and blocked a little earlier in the game on your kind of bad hands, you would have saved some damage and would have done well, but you didn't really think of that. Um, and so I think they're just not as into the game. So unfortunately, class didn't do a ton to grow it. We've just been mm -hmm. doing CC and we've been more consistently firing because like we just have a couple of more established players who are more yeah. into classic constructed but i mean and this is why like it's sad that we didn't get the armory decks because like what a great way to just be like oh you want to play this format go buy that just that right that. there on the shelf buy that i will buy i'll give you half the money for it or i'll buy it for you I, okay 40 bucks maybe i have 40 <laughs> bucks. I wouldn't buy it 40 bucks i know like a uh, blitz uh, deck uh, is one thing yeah blitz a 15 dollar blitz deck is one thing uh, uh, or and, and like i would give them like a i buy them each like a pack or something you know just yeah. as like a, a welcome to the game kind of thing didn't work as much as, as often as i'd like it works on some people but not everybody so um you know it's it's i think it's just it's rough sometimes you know sometimes you just don't get the right people in that that are more um into a more in-depth game like flesh and blood i think it's just it's like there's so much to sink your teeth into. It's a very deep and complex game. Um, I, I think it's like really high up there on the complexity level, which means that for somebody like me or yourself, obviously, like I love that aspect of it. I love that I get hundreds of thousands of hours. If I get bored with the hero, yep. I can just build a new one. We just try something, something else. Or, yeah, and, or and, switch and, up the weapons I'm making and tweak some cards. Yeah. Yeah, still build a different version. Oh, you know what? I'm getting tired of this base Enigma. I'm going to build Pummel Enigma and try that for a yeah. week. Or I'm going to build, you know, just straight Aura Enigma or something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's for me, I love Flesh and Blood for that depth, but it can be very hard for people to get into very because daunting. it's a lot. And it's like, I also have to keep it in mind, like, I got in with the first three sets before Monarch had yep. released. I, literally, the first set that I bought was Welcome to Wraith. So I got in at the ground floor when everything was very simple um, very easy to get into. This is why I'm happy we're getting things like first strike decks. I think those are going to mm -hmm. be very good to teach people. Um, more ar the more armory decks, the better. Because there's a lot of card game players out there who have played other card games plenty, and they can just like pick up Flesh and Blood and be like, "Oh, I got this." Con it, it, Pokemon is a good example because since we we're talking about it, you can yeah. get the intro decks. The intro decks are hot garbage, absolute trash. Terrible. Literally, are not even compared to the real game. Like they're they're not even even, not even, even their level three competitive decks. They're like almost there, mm -hmm. but they're still not there. I remember uh, I got into it just uh, at the start of X and Y um, in 2016. I, basically, when Pokemon Go became a thing and it, it blew yep. up. And my buddies and I got into the Pokemon card game because um, like sometimes I would get really sick of magic and want to play something else for a while, um, which is like I've never had that with Flesh and Blood, interestingly enough. But um, yeah, like I've, I've taken the little breaks off where I don't play very much for a couple weeks, but I've never been like, I just need to stop playing for a while because I'm sick of this crap. This or is true. Yeah, this um, is true. But like at least the EX battle decks, the ones where you, I bought the Mewtwo versus Darkrai one and I bought two of them. They came with like dark patches and all this other, like the Mewtwo yep. EX, the level ball one that like for each energy, it would deal, you know, 20 times the energy on it in the opponent. So you put like double colorless on and just slam in for a bunch. But I like, bought two of each of those and then mashed the two Mewtwo decks and the two Dark Ride decks. And they were like actually decently functioning They're decks, decent, which yeah. is pretty cool. Dark um, Patch is, is still in the, it's back in the game and it's amazing. Yeah. And the thing is, oh my God, Dark Patch is such a broken card. It's so good. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, because Pokemon's a game that it's literally about who sets up 
first. And if you yeah. set up like before your opponent, like Pokemon is one of those games though, where like you can tell the game is over like three, four, five turns before it's over. Cause sometimes it's like, I am too set up. There is no way you're getting out of this. Like I'm just, you know, but and- they've been doing one of the things that they really have been doing in the past few years is setting up. Like if you're behind, you get a bonus. if you play this card, because of that, because you're a hundred percent right. Yeah, it's like once you get ahead, you're like, I'm ahead. I got two prizes on you. We're I done. remember those in the X and Y where it's like you can search out one thing with the supporter, but if you're behind on prize cards, you know, if you have more prize cards than your opponent, you can actually do, you know, both abilities or something, or grab two yeah. cards or whatever. So you, yeah, that's that's actually really good balancing. But I mean, I think it just goes to show though the difference between a lot of this older yes. game design and a game like like newer game design fixes a lot of this even yes, even a game like uh grand archive fixes what magic had by just being like your lands are basically just the cards in your hand you put them down and they serve as like your resources it plays almost the exact same as magic outside of that right like the games yeah. are very very similar but like it's just a fixed version it's like a video game that's like it's the same genre but it just it, it improves upon the genre and that's kind of how i see a lot of games like clone magic or you know anything wanted to copy pokemon which i don't know if they have I'm I'm waiting for the game that copies Flesh and Blood system. So, Flesh and Blood system is interesting um, because this is a system that, while it is still fairly unique, there is a lot of there's a ton of pieces of it that are a part of. I don't know if you ever played a deck builder like Ascension or uh, I haven't now. So deck builder is very much like it's a, it's like a like you're drafting live mm-hmm. is what it is. Is really what it is. It's like, so like all of my cards either do attack or they give me money, um, depending on what it is. Some of them, some deck builders where it's like, oh, I don't do attack. I, you know, give victory points, right? But deck builders is a genre. If you're ever interested in it, I would check this out because Fab does almost to a T what that does, which is with that, you get five card hands instead of four. And then at the end of the turn, you have to discard anything you didn't use in there. And so you're constantly going through your hand exactly like this. Like, Fab is literally a streamlined constructed deck builder. And so that's actually fascinating to me because there's, I'm a hardcore board gamer. Uh, if you can tell, like a lot of this, anybody who's into board games would know what deck builder is. Um, anybody who's like into board game card games, I should say, say that. Cause I know a lot of board gamers that are like, I don't know what a deck builder is. Um, so like they took essence of these and then made it better. Like the whole system, the pitch system is just like a phenomenal system. Like that's just a f- amazing system. Um, and so while I want to say like, I'm waiting for a game to copy it, I'm also like, there's a lot of pieces that they copied from a deck Mm -hmm. builder and then just made it into a a phenomenal constructed experience. Um, cause a lot of times deck builders, cause it's like more of a board game, there's no like blocking and things like that. And so they really took a deck builder and said, okay, how can we turn this into a phenomenal, something better than magic is really what they did. And and just like I think I think like everybody always talks about the uh, the pitching being a really unique system of putting things to the bottom and it's it, don't get me wrong it's amazing it's an incredible system um, I think the most underrated and the best thing about Flesh and Blood is the turn cycles of players drawing up at the end of their turns like that makes the game the most balance i've ever played like obviously you're still gonna get high rolled by some decks like there's yeah. variants it's i and i like that about card games personally like sometimes i'll get salty because i once was at a cc event at worlds it was a side event and i was 3-0 and there was one more round left and it was like the people who won had a chance to, like play against the devs so i was like ooh, like that's interesting and then uh a five player i was playing draw mice who was already a bad matchup he goes art of war does his big turn next turn art of war does a big turn third turn in a row art of war does a big turn and i'm like i didn't even I, like there was no chance it was like turn two was his first art of war the first four turns and it was just each turn after he's like i'm sorry the last one he's like dude i'm so sorry i drew my last one <laughs> and i was like okay um, so I got a little so I wasn't salty at the player, just Art of War itself. Yeah, like, just Art of War itself. Bullshit. I got super high rolled. Because well, a lot of us, like, well, as much as we want to be competitive, we're like, I've been on the side that you're on, and so I'm really sorry that you're on that side. Yeah, but like, it's, you know, very few of us are like, yes, let's destroy them, like we see in Magic players. Yeah, oh, I'm crapping on Magic players. I've met some really oh. nice ones. I mean, I used to play Magic, so I'll crap on Magic players. You all suck, especially Commander players. As a former Commander player, Commander players are so obnoxious. Um, but no, I, I mean, obviously, it's like, it's a person-by-person thing. Some people are fine, some people are assholes. Yeah. It's the same with Flesh and Blood. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, the community's gotten more and more cringe as time's yes. gone on. As it gets bigger, there's just, 
everybody's arguing, everybody's angry, and it's like, okay, it's time to, now it's finally getting to that, like, typical online community, which, yeah. like, was bound to happen. We all knew it was coming eventually. Um, it, it was fun while it lasted, but we'll, we'll start to, to, you know, turn into that well, and that's, successful. And that's one of the things um, that I've been enjoying about Clash and just going into the um, casual scene. So I'm a part of several casual discords. I mean, we literally have fat, casual fab, which is a UTF discord. Um, and there's several, there's a, there's a handful of casual discords. And it's almost like this underground movement within fab that it's like, you either know or you don't kind of like an underground music scene. That's kind of what it, what it's comparable to where there's, it feels like when I took over clash, one of the things I did is I want to do online play immediately, whether we do it webcam or anything like that. Cause I, playing in the pandemic miss just being like hey random stranger that i talk to occasionally on twitter or whatever let's uh let's let's play a game or whatever and so there's this large like almost underground casual community in fab now that's not as large as i think it should be but i'm okay with that that feels like the old school fab community that we got in 2021 and 2022 and it went and it's been it's been very refreshing for me because I've been like you where like, you know, I, I don't know. I used to care too much and like with the different people, you know, we've had some, uh, we've had some, some, uh, interesting things in the past few years, uh, to say the least, some that have kind of pushed me off and off of it. And there's, and, uh, there's been a lot of that stuff where like, it's almost like my opinion matters. And, and I've been, guilty of that as well throwing that around and, like, it's, and it's been nice to just be like i don't care anymore i'm here to have fun again and i don't care enough about this game and just let me come in like let me play let me engage on it on a casual fun level the way that i was engaging with it when it was small and that's been the kind of what's coming up in, in in kind of the clash scene as well as um, just kind of the casual scene. And and that's been my goal from the beginning is I want to turn, I love flesh and blood. I don't love competitive games, but this game is just too good to not love. And so that's been kind of my take on a lot of doing a lot of the clash stuff and everything is it's a way for me to engage in the game I love and the way that I want. And like literally the mission statement of clash, when I took it over, I kind of put it up there is, Clash is going to be the best casual way to engage with Fab. Period. And that is my goal. I want it to be the best casual experience for a player. And if it becomes pseudo competitive, I'm angry at it. Like I don't want Clash to be pseudo competitive. And hey, Clash UPF also would probably be a really fun format to play if you got four of you together and you just wanted to play a big multiplayer round. You just oh yeah, we we did just, that. Yeah. We did that with Table and Legs. We did that a few weeks ago on, on his where they do UPF every Tuesday. And I was like, hey, let's do a Clash UPF. And we had a blast. I brought uh, I brought Taipanis. I made a Taipanis Clash deck just because. Nice. I think I'd do Enigma New Moon. Just to play that nice yes. legendary hero. Yeah. I have, I'm, I'm ordering her soon because I'm um, going to build a Clash deck with her. And I know it's going to be probably terrible, but I'm going to enjoy it to the end of time like i'm just oh, yeah. like i'm gonna learn how to play this deck and play it decent because i play a lot of vincette actually in clash vincette is really is pretty decent she's not like amazing but she's pretty good and i love those like decks of you can't play this in cc yet but i can play this in clash because we are a low health format and nobody has a ton of power level in mm -hmm. that um but i don't want to keep you because i know it's 20 minutes past. Getting a little late, yeah. It's 20 minutes past where we wanted to cut off, and I appreciate your time, Sloop. Um, well, thanks thank for having you for, me on. Thank, thank you for, for coming on and, and 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 just kind of joining in here, and I know it was late for you, and I appreciate you staying up late for me. Um, but I want I wanted to give you a chance to plug your stuff, um, plug your channel, and plug anything that's really cool that's going on right now. Uh, well, I mean, uh, just before I do that, I just wanted to say, uh, like, thank you to you, obviously, Nathaniel, like, just for running Clash and being, like, a pretty open person for the community. You've obviously built up your committee. You've actually put some effort towards it, which is really cool to see, because, like, so I don't know if you've noticed this online, a lot of people like to talk mad shit without ever putting time and effort towards what they're claiming they care about. So anytime somebody says that they care about something and they actually put effort towards it, it doesn't have to be a mass amount, but, like, the fact that you care enough that you asked for me to come on here to talk about it, you've 
you know, you've been doing all this stuff for it. I, I it's just, it's really cool to see that you actually care about something in this game and you're, it's, you know, you're not getting really backing or support from LSS, but you're still going with it and doing the best you can for it. Uh, I really like that you were trying to set up the format where if you do leave, just whether it's by choice or life circumstances or whatever, um, that it's not just going to all crumble be behind you. And that's like, really, that's honestly a, a very um, future looking perspective, which is really cool to see, you know? So, so I appreciate that. And thank you for what you're doing for the format. And hopefully LSS does pick it up someday. Cause I think it'd be really fun. Be uh, I don't think it's on their radar, but maybe someday, right? Cause they do have to like limit what they have. Uh, but as for myself, you can find me on the channel sloop dude. Sometimes I put on a frog hat and play Mr. Ribbits. I, I'm honestly, I'm getting the yearning to do another video with him. I might, do I it. might just do, I, cause listen, man, there's a new hero around in CC that is the most broken, busted Starvo level hero, apparently. So like, maybe I do, you know, maybe Mr. Rivers comes back out to talk about little old tiger boy. Um, I, so. I think, I think that needs to happen. I think it would bring joy to a lot of us people who have been watching you for a while. Yeah. Well, I am, uh, I've only done a couple days of editing on the Sunday. I did so much. I did a ton of work, but I've got like a 25 minute <laughs> video on whether it's still worth it to play flesh and blood. I've got over. I saw that you've been minute. promoting that. I'm, yeah, it's I'm almost excited half, about that. The main edit's almost, almost halfway done. I'm, I've got Saturday, Sunday and Monday cause it's Canada day, this whole, this upcoming weekend. So I am planning on just like getting that thing done and starting another like i really I, for sometimes i go where i'm like i'll make some longer videos then i'm like ah but they take a while maybe i should just make like these shorter ones but i'm never satisfied with the shorter videos mm -hmm. i always feel like they're just underbaked like i don't so it's like i kind of just want to stick to the more video essay style where like i might i'm honestly in the plan of like making them longer making them 25 to 30 minutes and it's like if it takes me a little longer i think the the finished product will be a lot more enjoyable than just like a bunch of mediocre whatever videos you know um, I know one of the things when I started, because I've done YouTube channels with some buddies of mine um, in the past, and when I started with Clash Hub, as I literally came into it and said, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And I can do that as a new channel. I'm like, I literally don't care about growth. I'm a niche format in a niche game. If I get 100 people, I'm happy, <laughs> like subscribers. And we're, we're actually getting towards that, surprisingly nice. enough. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people say that too. And hopefully you've heard this too. Do what makes you happy. At the end of the day, like it's, this is your channel is, you know, you, I know you have a day job and I know you have a busy season and lighter season. You've been very open about, I'm not sure what you do, but I know it's been a part of that. Um, and like make, do make the channel that you, that you want to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I get confused. And this is like the hard part is like, there's, I'm interested in a bunch of different stuff, right? So sometimes I'm like, I just want to talk about like Enigma right now. But then it's like, oh, but I want to do a, a video essay style on like the, the set that broke the game, Tales of Aria, and do like a whole deep dive into that. And it's just like yeah. all these ideas. Um, I constantly battle with that sense of like, do I want to, like, I need to be more frequent in the community. Like, I want to be more well-known and grow my channel. Because I see like three floating blow past me and just like accelerating at a rapid rate and be like, Man, I like I I'm okay they also have like with three people bigger, but... to your one. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and they have LSS backing them and like sponsors. But it's like you know, then I get that pressure of like, oh, I gotta put stuff out. But I really that's the, my like my biggest struggle. But it's something like, and it's the same with LSS and anybody yourself, like any creative thing. It's like sometimes you just gotta give things time to make it the best product it can be. Um, and that's often more times more important. It's like PVE. They're not going to put it yeah. out till it's perfectly done. And I think that's better, even though it's like, I want it now. I know like, I do want it now. It's, so bad. it's better to wait for a base, like a full finished product than it is to get a half baked pile of crap. Look at video games. Nobody likes when the game release is half finished and has to get like two weeks worth of updates just to be playable. Oh, for sure. Bye. For sure. Anyways. Um, so we can find you at Sloop Doop. Um, uh, go ahead and plug all your channels, your YouTube, your Twitter, all of that. Sloop Dupe Twitter is don't follow me on there because Twitter is a hellhole. But if you want to, it's Sloop Dupe Fab. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm sure you just literally just search up Sloop Dupe. You'll find it. And my Twitter's yeah. in the description of most videos and that. So um, if you want to go watch it, I'm sure that some of you, I mean, I've got a few videos that have done really well. So I'm sure like most people have at least seen something that I've made, whether you liked it or not, is, you know, a totally different story. But hopefully, uh, you know, I, have, I, I will I will say this. Your content over the years has gotten better and better and better. Like there's been a significant improvement um, to where you're probably like my one of my favorite channels, like easily. Like you're one of the first channels I go to of, hey, what's going on in Fab? What's what's going on in there? Uh, like every I don't know what it is, but I know you've put a lot of work into it. But I just want to tell you, like, I have noticed improvement um, over the years and um, it's turned into 
easily one of my favorite channels. Oh. I, I really appreciate that, man. I, I knew from the start that like when I first started, I was like, I'm just gonna turn on a camera and talk, right? Like everybody else does. Because I was like, I just want to talk about this game. But as like, time went on, I was like, I really like doing this. And I knew that Flesh and Blood was a high enough quality game that the content quality would go up over time. And I also knew that like, if I wanted to be at the top of the YouTube space, like and actually have something of a, of a platform, I needed to improve what I was making. So I just made it my goal to just get good at making videos. And like, regardless of, I will not like, obviously so everybody chases some form of numbers yeah. on YouTube, but like truly it was just like, if I want the numbers, I just have to be good enough to earn them. So it's like, I just need to keep improving the craft, the actual creative skills, the presenting and the, you know, the, the editing and, and everything, um, knowing how to like, you know, I used to over edit and now it's like, I'm coming back down from that of like, what's a more moderate amount that's, that's not so mind numbing to watch, but it's also mm -hmm. engaging at the same time telling story a bit better and presenting things nicer so you know yeah. it's uh it's like 80 different skills that you have to really kind of yeah. learn and master because i'm doing everything by myself but i i really like doing it and you know sometimes it's really hard because you'll put out something you worked hard on and it's like it flops and you're like oh god this feels like shit for a few weeks uh, but other times i'll put out something like the powering down of fab that did way better than i ever thought it would and it's just like that's a that's like one video i'll look back on and be super proud of to be like that's mm -hmm. that's even if that even if i stop now at least i did that you know at least you i gave that. the community that video so you know, yep. it's been a, it's been a pretty cool ride. And I, I, again, I really appreciate you having me on here. Yep. But anyways, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, everybody have a good night. Sloop, you have a great night. It's Absolutely. way past her bedtime. It's past my bedtime. Yeah. So 10 30. Yeah, we're old men. I know. And it's nine 30 for me. And I, and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> so I've been chasing three kids all day. So I, I, uh, have the first few, I took the first few days off of the work week, spend time with my family. And so, We've been just nonstop. As you can see, I have a very big burn on my face because we were at the parks and pools and all sorts of fun. So I'm ready for yeah. bed. And I know you've had a full day. I'm just day. tanned, so. <laughs> I don't I'm tan. A, I just burn. Yeah, I uh, I work for a, a trust building company. So we I basically <laughs> run a big component saw. And I, I go outside. I pick up stacks of lumber. I carry it in. I run it through <laughs> the saw. Like, that's my job. So I'm out and about all the time. Well, here, when I'm wearing, I wear muscle shirts at work for the cooling of, like, no no clothing on the yeah. outfits. And uh, so, like, I'll have, like, the very white, you know, lines on me. So, um, you know, very pasty underneath. <laughs> it's fun. But yeah. everyone have a great night. Sloop, thank Absolutely. you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks again. Have a good one.